Hello and welcome. Welcome to worship at San Ramon Valley United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Kim Reisdorf, and a special greeting to all who are visiting online or in person, wherever you are as you worship, whatever brought you here, you are welcome here. We are continuing to broadcast the good news, Christ is risen. risen We're off to a good start. But here's the thing. If we say the words, Christ is risen, but not really sure what it means and how we will let that change our lives today and in all the days to come, then resurrection is just something that happened long ago. So, for today, I want you to imagine that someone approached you in an on-the-street interview, and they ask you, what does resurrection, what does Christ is risen mean to you? If you're worshiping with us online, Go ahead and add something to the comment section, a word or a phrase, and we'll incorporate that later in worship. Wherever you are, sometime this week, your assignment, and I'm a former professor, so I take assignments seriously. Your assignment is sometime, somewhere, the drive home, around the dinner table, in a small group, in your journal, somewhere to articulate what does it mean that Christ is risen. And today, today I'll tell some stories about people who let that change their lives and about people who forgot to let that change their lives. The first one, first story is about Reverend Alfred Ackley. In the 1930s, he was asked by a student, why should I bother to care about a rabbi, a teacher who died? And the Reverend Ackley uh, recognized within himself, he had strong convictions about this that the resurrection wasn't just a former event, a historical event. It meant that Christ's presence, a divine presence, the very essence of love, lives here, walks with us, and talks with us along life's narrow ways. He couldn't shake that question. He couldn't shake his um, sense that he had more and more to say about this. And his wife, slightly exasperated, it happens, said, stop talking about it, do something about it. So... He sat down at his desk, took out a pen, and these words just poured through him. And as those words came out, the music to those words came out. And that leads us to our opening hymn, He Lives, by Alfred Ackley. So wherever you are, feel free to participate robustly with gusto. You can stand and sing. You can sit and tap your toes. Let's sing, He Lives.
<laughs> you could tell that Dewey liked that one, yeah. <laughs> but how do we know? How do we know that Christ, that living presence of love, walks with us and talks with us along life's narrow way? Well, we have a clue in our scripture. And this assignment is for those worshiping here in person. As we listen to the scripture, all of us, I want you to notice what phrase is repeated again and again and again. You'll be graded on it later. Um, but that's your role in preparing to listen for this scripture. But before we do that, join me in a moment of prayer. Oh God, who is always with us, open our hearts and our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and pondered, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Hear now today's scripture reading from the book of John. Later on that day, the disciples had gathered together, but fearful of the Jews, had locked all, all the doors in the house. Jesus entered, stood among them, and said, Peace to you. Then he showed them his hands and side. <clears throat> the disciples, seeing the master with their own eyes, were awestruck. Jesus repeated his greeting. Peace to you. Just as the Father sent me, I send you. Then he took a deep breath and breathed into them. Receive the Holy Spirit, he said. If you forgive someone's sins, they're gone for good. If you don't forgive sins, what are you going to do with them? But Thomas, sometimes called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we saw the master. But he said, unless I see the nail holes in his hands, put my finger in the nail holes, and stick my hand in his side, I won't believe it. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the room. This time, Thomas was with them. Jesus came through the locked doors, stood among them, and said, peace to you. Then he focused his attention on Thomas. Take your finger and examine my hand. Take your hand and stick it in my side. Don't be unbelieving, believe. Thomas said, my master, my God. Jesus said, so you believe because you've seen with your own eyes. Even better blessings are in store for those who believe without seeing. Jesus provided far more God-revealing signs that are written down in this book. They are written down so you will believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and in the act of believing, have real and eternal life in the way he personally revealed it. May we hear God's word in this lesson. So, what phrase was repeated, I counted three times. Peace, peace, peace to you, peace be with you. That's the signature move of the risen Christ, to reach out and say peace, peace to you. So as we move deeper into a time of worship, I invite you to take a moment to consider in your own life, where do you most need to hear the words, peace be with you, peace of Christ to you? Could be there's a loved one in the hospital. Could be that you are in that moment in your life where you're deciding which college to go to and just want to make sure you're making the right decision. Or maybe your parents want to make sure you're making the right decision. Peace be to you. It could be that events in Ukraine have, un and should, unsettle us. And we want to know Christ's peace in that part of the world. It could be a health condition for you or a loved one. 
We want that reassurance of peace. May we all be open to the Christ coming into that dark, scary place that we hold and saying, peace be with you. Now, a lot of us won't hear that spoken in words, peace be with you, but we can, um, we can remember times when we knew peace, not because the circumstances outside warranted it, but right alongside whatever we were experiencing, there was a moment of peace. It could be the peace that comes when you're outside and you look up at the stars and you know you're part of something bigger than yourself. Sometimes for me, it's when I hear a bird or see a flower or see the face of a loved one. Something in the midst of life that reminds us that peace is present with us, right alongside, because it seemed a rather preposterous thing that Jesus said, peace be with you, when he first encountered his disciples in the upper room where they were locked behind a door in fear. It was a preposterous thing to say when you think of what they were experiencing. They had just witnessed the horrific violence of a crucifixion. They had just lost someone that they thought would lead them forward for the rest of their lives. They were now afraid that they would be the next victims of persecution. And Christ comes, the presence of love comes and says, peace be with you. The good news is Christ doesn't wait until things are all calm and tranquil before Christ appears. And if we miss it the first time, as in the story, Christ keeps appearing, looking for a way to reassure us in very individual ways. Peace be with you. The other part of the good news is you don't have to be spiritually advanced to receive the assurance that Christ's peace is with you. No one would accuse the disciples we read about in the Gospels of being incredibly mature spiritual leaders. That's not the description we get of them. No, their main spiritual practices were to be confused, to freak out, and to argue among themselves who was greatest. But that all changed after the resurrection because that line, peace be with you, had some other taglines attached to it. The taglines were, just as God sent me into the world, I send you. The peace that, we, that is offered to us through the eternal ever-presence of, of God, divine love in this world, isn't just so we'll feel pretty tranquil in our own lives. It is so that we bring that peace into the world. And we know just about every day how much the world needs that peace. The power of the risen Christ is to bring that presence wherever we go. There's a, a gentleman that I, I um, read a lot about, John Philip Newell. He had his own moment of realizing what it meant to believe in a risen Christ. And it came from looking at a piece of art, a piece of art from the Last Supper. And you'll see that uh, up in the screen in just a moment. He, um, that picture of the disciple John leaning into Jesus spoke to him in profound ways that gave him peace. So he kept looking at the painting, kept dwelling with it, kept returning to it. It occurred to him that in that picture, what was happening was that John, the beloved disciple, was listening to the heartbeat of God. To listen to the heartbeat of God. And the author went on to say, that's the image that made it deep into the heart of my writing in the hope that it would enable all of us to be more deeply aware of the sacred within every moment and every encounter. That's resurrection living, seeing the Christ, the sacred, within every moment, every encounter, even the challenging ones. He wrote about this in a book, Sacred Earth, Sacred Souls, which uh, is a great one to read before, after, and all, the t or all around Earth Day because it, it emphasizes what our souls already know. The risen Christ is present. But then the author goes on to talk of a time when we forget, when we forget the Christ is present, and that changes how we treat one another. He was giving a book reading 
in Ottawa about all that he was learning and experiencing about the light of Christ that is in the world and in us. And a young Mohawk leader was there. At the end of the talk, he stood up and with tears in his eyes, he said this. As I have been listening to these themes, I've been wondering where I would be tonight, where my people would be tonight, where we would be as a Western world tonight, if the mission that had come to us from Europe centuries ago had come expecting to find light in us. These words from the Mohawk elder pierced John Philip Newell's soul, and he went on to reflect on that. He said, it pierced my heart with a truth I've never forgotten. We cannot undo the tragic wrongs that have been done to Native American people during the westward expansion, where indig indigenous human life was seen as having no value and viewed only as a hindrance in a quest for land and its resources. We cannot reverse the injustice, pain, and suffering that resulted from horrendous greed and arrogance. We can, however, be part of new beginnings. We can open ourselves to a radical humility of the heart and look with expectation for the sacred deep in each one of us, the other individual, the other religion, the other nation, the other race or sexual orientation. We can look with reverence to serve this sacredness in each other to honor it, to nurture it. We can awaken to the sacred in all things. Then we're not just believing in the resurrection of Christ. We are participating in it. We are letting that divine presence be in us, be part of how we move into the world. And how do we practice that? We practice it by listening to that divine voice that says to us, I am with you. I offer you what I need, or what you need, each step of the way. How to start? How to start that journey of resurrection living? I think our special piece of music will guide us along that way.
Music, music is one of the ways we know that there is a divine presence at work in the world. And a special shout out to Edie and Scott and Bella, because Bella just found out she was singing that song when Rosalind uh, woke up with strep throat yesterday. She was scheduled to sing. So. <laughs> Grateful for that. The resurrected Christ says again and again, peace be with you. And then go bring that peace into the world. So every time we worship together, we have an opportunity to give so that we can bring that peace alive into the world. And we're especially aware of the needs for peace in Ukraine. As we gather to give during this worship service, we, we appreciate all the gifts to maintain the ministry and outreach at this church, but we also have a special offering going to Ukraine. The United, States, or the United Methodist Committee on Relief is active in Ukraine, joining with other local organizations on the ground to provide food, water, medicine, shelter, and transportation in the country, as well as attending to those seeking refuge in, in neighboring countries. Our help is needed, and one of the ways we can do that is through our financial donations. When you give to UMCOR, all of it goes towards a special designation because the administrative costs have already been covered by previous donations we've, we've made. So if you're worshiping with us online, you'll see uh, a QR code or directions to our website that will get you to um, all the places you need in order to give. You can, if you're worshiping with us in person, you can always go home and do that or on your phone. Uh, and when you leave today, you'll notice there's some plates in the lobby area of the church and any uh, donations marked for Ukraine, there are envelopes in, your, um, in the pews around you, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. And so we continue to listen to the voice that says, peace be with you, and use us, put us in the world to be your peace.
Lord, my rock and redeemer, thank you that you have infinitely, consistently, and perfectly wise. You have said that what, whatever we give is acceptable if we give it eagerly. You have said that we should give according to what we have. Help us to bring our offerings with an eager heart, not as a comparison with others, but as an act of worship to you. May we find the comfort we desire in you and the strength we need in your name. May your presence be with us every hour of the day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Part of the way we become aware and strengthen our awareness of the peace of Christ among us is by praying, simply turning to God and offering the joys and concerns on our hearts. Within our own community, please hold these loved ones in your prayer. Yesterday, we celebrated the life of Sandy Clark and all that she will forever mean to us. And the flowers that you see on the altar were, were part of that. And after a memorial service, I think it's true that the family and friends of, of those that we have been honoring, it, the busyness is kind of over and we experience grief in a different way. So please continue to hold the Clark family in your prayers as they navigate this time. We pray also for Ginger, Sandy Greenwood Davidson's sister, as she prepares for uh, shoulder surgery in early May. It's the delicate surgery that can yield wonderful results. May that be true for Ginger. Prayers also for uh, Bob and his wife, Terry. Bob has been in the hospital following a seizure and welcomes our prayers, and Terry as well during this time. And Shirley, Shirley, who lives in Santa Rosa, also welcomes our prayers as she heals from pneumonia. Shirley, we surround you with love and steadfast prayers. May you feel held by all the love in the world. Prayers also for Pastor Dan, who served here in this congregation. He welcomes your prayers. He's had a, quite a few, a few too many, trips to the hospital and ER in the last week um, as they work to address abdominal pain related to a previous surgery. No, he said that knowing that you are praying for him means a great deal. Prayers for successful pre treatment of pain, for patients, and for well-being. And yes, we pray for peace. We pray for peace because we have been empowered to be peacemakers in the world, for peace in Ukraine, in the Middle East, in our communities, and in our nation. So join me in a moment of prayer. And after our prayer, we will voice together the Lord's Prayer. And I invite you to say those familiar words in a way, in a slow way, so it opens the doors of our minds and hearts to the awareness that these words can take on new meaning each time we carry them in our hearts and lives. In the spirit of being willing to be surprised, let us pray. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with life anew. With all the gentleness and strength in the world, you enter the places where we are trapped, afraid, uncertain, and grieving. Speak to us of peace. Empower us to be your peace. You are here with us, and for this we give thanks as together we pray the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, yeah. 
And now some opportunities to go forward living Christ's peace in the world. And some of this is top secret. The first part isn't. Pastor Munchu is on vacation this week. Still not the secret part. Um, and he has been appointed to a new church in Walnut Creek starting July 1st. And we're looking for the opportunity to send him off and his family with our blessings and our thanksgiving. So we're planning some things that we're keeping secret from him. One is you're welcome to make a financial donation, and we'll put all of that together to present him with a check for the send-off on Sunday, um, May 22nd. And you can um, make those donations by um, <laughs> writing them to me. <laughs> <laughs> And I will combine all those texts together. You can also Venmo me. Um, you can find me on Venmo, Venmo by my name or by my um, cell phone number or drop them off at the office. And again, all of those will be collected and presented as one. And we are looking to compile a, um, a book with memories and photos and well wishes. It'll be online and then we'll print it off for him. And so we want you to participate in that. Be on the lookout for a letter that will go out to everyone but Muntu um, about this. But if you're here with us in worship, if you look at the end of your pew, there's a little card right there. And you might want to take those home or right here after worship, write a note, a favorite memory, a thank you, draw a picture, whatever, um, so that those will become part of that book. And we need those contributions by May 15th. So... That's, that's all the, the news about um, how we'll send off Muntu. And then I want to invite you, uh, it, for, to, if you, if you qualify, to the Women's Retreat, which will happen June 3rd to June 5th in the beautiful Santa Cruz area. This is the last day uh, to register, and you can do that online at our SRV UMC uh, um, website. Pastor Muntu will be leading that retreat, and the theme is rest in the storm, how much we need to hear that. Talk about finding peace in the midst of life. That's what happens at many of these retreats. I wholeheartedly urge you, if that weekend is free, um, retreats are a wonderful way to connect, refresh, and find peace. And um, please, please consider joining that. And now a, an announcement from Nadia. Um, good morning. I would like to invite you all to a concert of choral music presented by a um, local uh, choir, Center Mount Valley Chorale, uh, directed by my husband, Bruce Kalaha, and accompanied by myself. Uh, the title of this concert is uh, The Promise of Living. And uh, through a variety of music from classical to gospel, uh, four aspects of life I explored. Life possibilities, blossoming, sorrow, and hope. Both concerts, uh, there are two concerts, uh, next Sunday, May 1st, and the following Saturday, May 7th. Both are happening here, right here in the sanctuary at 4 p.m. And the tickets can be purchased at um, srvcoral.com. We strongly recommend if you would like to come to purchase the tickets online because even though they will be sold at the door, um, we're not sure if there will be room for tickets at the door. No masks or uh, vaccinations are required, so please come and join us in the concert. Thank you. Hope to see you there. Bye. And we're so delighted that one of our favorite traditions, Lunch with Friends, is back. That will be Tuesday, May 3rd at 12 noon, and you're all invited to a lunch here on campus. And what a lunch it'll be. Shrimp cocktail, a yummy salad, warm rolls, and velvet cake, my favorite, uh, uh, a la mode. To plan for this event, um, do let us know if you plan to participate. You can do that. There'll be some sign-up sheets after, after worship in the church. You can start, uh, call the church office. You can get, let one of the pastors know. We are looking forward to seeing you there, to being able to gather again and to be part of that. Now, um, next week, this is the last quiz you'll have for the day. Next week, you won't be here at 9 a.m. to worship, will you? No. No. But you will be here at 10 a.m. for our new worship time for Sunday school and for worship. And we're looking, we're looking forward to that. 
also wanted to invite you to one more event here on campus on May 5th. That's going to be an open house in our um, office building. If you've never seen our, 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 we were busy during COVID remodeling the office. So come and ooh and ah, but come and meet some of our new staff members as well. Feel free to stop by between 1 and 3 p.m. You can stop by any time. We'd be glad to see you. But we will be having an open house on um, Thursday, May 5th from 1 to 3 p.m. And now we have taken in the good news that the peace of Christ is with us. And now the Spirit sends us forth to serve. And that's our final hymn to sing together. And now we have resurrection living to do. If you're worshiping with us in person, please join us in the courtyard for a time of fellowship and conversation and perhaps interviewing one another about what resurrection truth means to you as we go forward to practice living aware of the peace of Christ. So may God bless you and keep you and be gracious unto you. May God grant you the grace to never sell yourself or God short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to know the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your mind and think through it. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your heart and set it on fire. Go forward together to be the presence of Christ alive in this world. Amen.